Here we go. <clears throat> Sorry. As you know, I got uh, caught a cold, I guess, while I was in. <clears throat> while we were on vacation. And um, uh, so I didn't do the stream yesterday. It was just too much. I had too much. And I'm still going to be going, you know, all that good stuff. So if I've got a hawk loogie just I'm not going to mute it. You guys are just going to have to deal with it. Um, my wife would love that. I'm going to be reading from 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 22, 2. Acts 21, 18 through 36. Psalm 150, 1 through 6. And Proverbs 18, 9 through 10. Um, if you would. Uh, pop open your Bible, read along from whatever version it is you use. I would suggest the New King James because um, that's what I'm using. And uh, you might get a little confused if you don't, if and you don't. Um, so here we go. Father, we thank you for this time together. Uh, we lift up your word, Lord. Uh, let it um, increase me. Let me hear from you. Um, let me grow in love with you. Um, in prayer, when I reach out to you, Lord, your word is how you answer. Father, um, let your Holy Spirit guide us into what we need to discuss today. <clears throat> and uh, be with my throat and my cold in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yeah, continue to pray for my healing and for others' healing. Um, and I know sometimes we, we think, oh, doesn't work and you know they ended up having to go you know because people go to the doctor all the time and don't get well so even when people are healed by what we call natural processes those are still natural processes that god designed and i believe sometimes uses those to heal people so and i know that sounds a little like a comp out but it's not it's kind of like how you know the person says i expected god to save me but it ended up being the uh, National Guard or something like that during a hurricane or a flood. And it's like, you know, who do you think brought those guys in? Who do you think inspired those guys to join the military and do those things? And it's like, God does things, man. <clears throat> God could have had somebody join years ago just because he knew he's going to use them to save you today. He's pretty cool like that. Second Kings 20, verse 1, In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. And he turned his face towards the wall, and he prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what was good in your sight. Hezekiah wept bitterly. It happened before Isaiah had gone out in the middle of the court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant, David. Then Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. So they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What is a sign that the Lord will heal me, and then I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? So you see that he uses something that seems like a medicinal thing to heal him. Um, and, and it may have been exactly that. That was what was needed, but it was all given and done by the Lord. And Isaiah said to him, uh, well, You know, what is the sign the Lord will heal me? Then I shall go up to the house of the Lord on the third day. And Isaiah said, this is a sign to you from the Lord, um, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go backward 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it's an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, but no, let the shadow go backwards 10 degrees. So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord. He brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone uh, down on the sun dial of Ahaz. And at that time, uh, Baradak, son of Baladan, the son of uh, Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and presents to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah was attentive to them and showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver, gold, the spices, 
precious ointment, all of his army, all that was found in his house. There was nothing in his house or his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Isaiah went to him and said to him, what do you, what do these men say? And from where do they come to you? Hezekiah said, they come from the far country from Babylon. And he said, what have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, they've seen all that is in my house, nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And, I, and Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what shall be carried to Bab that your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And so they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord, which you have spoken, is good. Um, will there not be peace and truth? And this is weird, right? It's like hearing what you want to hear. Hezekiah, Isaiah said to Hezekiah, You know, bad days are coming. Hezekiah says to Isaiah, The word of the Lord, which you have spoken, is good. For he said, will there not be peace and truth, at least in my days? So he's like, at least it's going to be okay while I'm here. It's crazy. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, all his might, how he made a pool and a tunnel, brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Hezekiah rested with his fathers. Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Um... Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was uh, uh, Hathizbah, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah's father had destroyed. He raised up altars for Baal, and, and he made a wooden image. Uh, or you could say Baal, too. I know some people say Baal. And he made a wooden image as Ahab, king of Israel, had done, and he worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Also, he made his son pass through the fire, practice soothsaying, use witchcraft, and consulted spiritists and mediums. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. He burned his own child to worship a, a pagan god, a demon. He even set a carved image of Asherah that he had made in the, that he had made in the house of which the Lord had said to David and Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not make the feet of Israel wander any more from the land which I gave their fathers, only if there's always a, a, a contingent on the promises that God makes for Israel here. And only if they are careful to do according to all that I have commanded them, according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. And they ain't going to do it. Right? But they paid no attention. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. So Manasseh, their, their king, has them sin more than even the pagans have. And the Lord spoke by his servants to prophet, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has done these abominations, he has acted more wickedly than all the Amorites who were before him, also made Judah sin with his idols. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whoever hears of it, both his ears will tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab. I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. So I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and deliver them into the hands of their enemies. And they shall become victims of plunder to all their enemies because I have, they have done evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the days of their fathers came out, since the day their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. He's like, it's, it's a never ending thing with you guys. You, know, you're, you, you keep doing these things over and over and over again and expecting a different result. It's a definition of insanity. Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, besides his sin by which he made Judah sin and doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, 
Oh, did he did? And the sin that he committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? So Manasseh rested with his fathers. He was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haraz, uh, or Haruz, uh, Jotba, of Jotba. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. So he walked in all the ways that his father had walked. He served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. He forsook the Lord God of his fathers and did not walk in the way of the Lord. Then the servants of Ammon conspired against him and killed the king in his own house. But the people of the land executed all those who had conspired against King Ammon. Then the king and then the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah. Then Josiah, his son, reigned in his place. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. Just think, maybe two years, I got maybe two years, you know. It's spooky, man. Um, his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adiah uh, Bos of Boskoth. So, different mom. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and he walked in all the ways of his father David, and did not assert, turn aside to the right hand or the left. And we'll see tomorrow exactly how long he reigned for. So remember, if I don't get on, um, and I don't, you know, I don't let you know that I'm not going to be here. Um, I try to make the time somewhere between seven and nine, but you know, hey, it's almost eleven today, so it is what it is. <laughs> You know, you can always catch the recording usually on the day of sometimes. But if I don't get on and I don't do it, you know, it's up to you to do it. Read, read your own Bible. Uh, Acts 21, verse 18. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James and all the elders were present. When he had greeted them, he, to he told in detail those things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. So he's like, you know, he's ministering specifically the gospel to the Gentiles and seeing amazing results. When they heard it, they glorified the Lord. They said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed and are all zealous for the law, but they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children nor to walk according to the customs. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have come. Therefore, do what we tell you. Take these four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be purified with them. And pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and they may all know that these things of which they informed of you concerning you are nothing but that you also walk orderly and keep the law. So they're like, you know, these guys are saying you're lawless, you know. And it's not just that Paul's living in sin. It's Paul is teaching the facts of the scripture is that even for the Jew, um, these things are no longer required. Christ is that circumcision that is done without hands. You know, so, you know, real physical circumcision is not required anymore. The covenant has been fulfilled. It has all been fulfilled in Christ. But there is no Christian law against obeying the law for the Jew because it is their law. Paul had said it and even they had said it. You know, if, they, if anybody wants to follow the law, their synagogues, go see what they got to say. He said, but concerning the Gentiles who believe, verse 25, we have written and decided they should observe no such thing, except that they should keep themselves from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. Because any of those things would require a Jew who is being obedient to a law not to fellowship with them. So even if a Jew is a Christian, here it's saying that if you partake of these things and do these things, we shouldn't fellowship with you. So this is a thing that breaks fellowship. And Paul took the men, and the next day, having purified them, he entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Now when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people, the law, and this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defied this holy place. So they, they outright lie. And, you know, if you ever watch, I really like watching um, auditors like go into places, right? 
on videos and how people freak out because somebody's filming them in public. And, um, you know, and it's just, it is so crazy to me, but when people call the police, they always over-exaggerate what they've done or outright lie and say the person is harassing them or the person's doing this. Uh, and here they outright lie to manipulate people and get them to, you know, turn into a mob or get them to assault someone or arrest. But verse 29 says they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. So they were saying, oh, no, we saw that Greek that he was with. And that's the guy he brought into the temple. And then all the city was disturbed and the people ran together, seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple. And immediately the doors were shut. Now, as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the garrison that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. Remember, Paul's a Roman citizen. He immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. When they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. And then the commander came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains. And he asked who he was and what he had done. And some among the multitude cried one thing and some another. So when he could not ascertain the truth about the tumult, he commanded him to be taken into the barracks. When he reached the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. So the multitude of the people followed after him, crying out, away with him. Wowzer. So, I mean, would you lose connection, lose the capability of worshiping God in the way that you had for the entirety of your youth, your adult life, everyone that you loved, everything that you love is just ripped from you. Not just ripped, but in complete and utter violence. You know, and the kingdom of God is taken by force, it says. So here, Paul being beaten, being hurt, and now being captured by those who are not even of the, the, the word. Simply because he's loving on people and willing to do anything he can to make peace. <clears throat> you can't make peace with the world. You just can't. Right. Um, the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. Praise the Lord, Psalm 150, 1 through 6. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Whew. Proverbs 18, 9 through 10. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. Man, that's convicting, huh? Yeah? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Man. You know, we always say the name of the Lord. It's not like a magical name. It's not like if you don't know the how to pronounce the exact name of God, Yahuwah or something like that, whatever it is that people say. That's not the point. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. You know, it's it's a metaphor that God he, you know, the true God. The, because we can't really know his name, the I am. He, he is a strong tower. The righteous, you run to that. You run to him. You know, you don't just shout out his name. You don't just say, you who, who. It's, you run to who he is. You run to him. You run and you pray and you seek him out and you call upon him. You know, the, you know, the I am, uh, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus, um, you know, uh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkenu, you know, all these things. We cry out all the, you know, his name is the strength 
and everything that we could go to and can go to and should go to. Nothing else can really save us. You know, you might save me from a flood, but can you save me from hell? Only God can. Um, thank you guys. Uh, pray it was a blessing to you. And have a wunderbar kind of day. Peace.